What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how you can save balance limits. So, a couple of, well, probably over a month ago now, I made this video called Gecko Trading Bot Set Balance Limit for Each Gecko and Potentially Trade Multiple Coins with a Single API Key. Because the idea is, if you set, let's say, if you have a thousand dollars in your portfolio that you can trade on your exchange, you can set aside, let's say, two hundred dollars for Bitcoin, two hundred dollars for Ethereum, and so on and so forth for each of your altcoins, whatever it is that you want to trade on. And by default, Gecko doesn't let you do that because Gecko is a trading bot that uses your entire balance. So this video show you how to um, set a balance limit. Since that point. I mean, I have made other videos like this one where you layer by sales last week, which is pretty much the same idea, a little bit more uh, concise. The code is a lot better now at this point, where you actually can set the amount in your strategy itself so that you don't have to go into trader.js and actually modify the trader.js file every single time you want to change the limit balance for the coin you're trading on. But there's one problem with this. So let's take a look at this hypothetical scenario here. So let's say that earlier this month, I started Gecko and set a balance limit to $120. So now Gecko will only use $100, $120 per trade. And then on that same day, it buys one ETH and hypothetically speaking, one ETH equals to $120 exactly. So I was able to buy one ETH with $120. The next day, it was able to sell one ETH for $123, making like a what, roughly 2% gain. So, but then the day after that, Gecko crashed, restarted with PM2. So if you guys don't use PM2, you guys should definitely check out PM2 because it's a very easy way to have Gecko running to the point where anytime it crashes, PM2 will just restart it for you. I mean, that's the default mode for PM2. So it's a great tool to combine with Gecko. Now, as I said though, even though it restarted with PM2, the balance limit, it resets back to $120 because that's what you set it on your trader.js file or if you watch my previous video, you were setting it on your strategy. That's not what you want to do, right? Because you want Gecko to remember how much limit there is so that even if it crashes, it recovers that a balance limit and goes back to trading at $123. The same applies too if you were trading and then Gecko made a loss. You don't want it to trade at a higher balance again and kind of just eat into your um, your portfolio using your funds for other strategies just because Gecko crashed. So let me show you how I did this. So what I really did was I added more code to the smart strategy template. I know the the smart strategy template is actually getting pretty long at this point. There's quite a bit of um, functions in here. I mean, you don't have to use all of it. The idea is, it's like they're all built in there, so you don't have to use any of it. But then you can use whatever you want to and have it know more information about the current status of your portfolio than the default gecko, which doesn't know anything. So the last one right here, I added know the balance limit for, for trading and recover that information after a crash. So first thing we need to do is add FS. FS, if you guys remember my video on the blotter, FS lets you read or write to the file system. This gives you an access, a way to save any information into a file. Like with the blotter file, you are able to save it into a CSV file. In this case, we're not going to use a CSV because most programs just doesn't interpret CSV very well. So what we're doing right now is in the init function, we, get, we created this thing called FS read file very similar to how Blotter was set up, where instead of setting up a Blotter file, if no such file exists, we're setting up a balance tracker. And this time we're going to save it as a JSON file instead of a CSV file. JSON is pretty much, I almost want to say it's like a universal standard in terms of uh, passing information back and forth between different systems. So why not, you know, just save this information as a JSON file and so that when your when Gecko needs to recover that information, it can just pull out from a JSON file. It's very easy for Gecko to do that. So the idea is again, it tries to read from the balance tracker file, and the balance tracker file is named after your strategy. So the idea is, your strategy has to have a name first. So in this case, it's just a smart strategy dash template. But whatever you call your strategy, let's say it's RSI or Moon or something, you know, and then it would be Moon dash balance tracker. In this case, it would be 
smartstrategy-template-balancetracker.json. If that file doesn't exist, and when you run the, your strategy for the first time, it doesn't. So it would say, oh, no file with this name found. It's going to create a new tracker file. So this one's going to create the tracker file so that it would actually have a place to write this information. And then it actually it's going to write this information right away. As soon as it finds that there's no file, it's going to go and populate this file object here that was created earlier within this read file call. And actually in here, it's going to populate the file object with asset limit, which is up here, which we already set already. So idea is it's going to, you're going to set this trading limit, your, how much is willing to trade on asset and how much is willing to trade on fiat in your strategy. At this point, it's kind of useless because you're already setting this in your strategy. So, and then it's just going to save that information into that file, but it comes in handy later. So after it sets those two variables, it then go append file. Basically, this would um, write this information into that JSON file. And if it has problem creating that file, this logs the error saying unable to create the balance tracker file. So that's the case if it doesn't find the file. So if it does find the file, it's going to try to read the contents of the file. It's going to run this try catch bracket in here. It's going to use that file object created earlier, right here. And it's going to actually call json.parse contents. So again, contents is what the information is pulled out from the file via the read file uh, method. So read file, if it comes up with an error, it'll create the new tracker file. If it doesn't come up with an error, it's going to use the contents in here. It's going to parse that information that was stored as JSON into this file object. And inside this file object, we're going to populate the asset limit with the fiat and the fiat limit so that it's going to overwrite these two amounts to the amount that actually is in the file. So it's going to update this information as soon as the strategy starts. Essentially, this is the recovery process that we really care about. So that if Gecko was winning, making a winning trade on Ethereum and actually made a profit, it's going to know to use that new balance limit of $123 instead of $120. So that's the read portion. So let's go over how, when do we actually write this information into this balance tracker file. And I'm pretty sure you guys can guess it by now. We are going to write it in the on trade function. This function is called whenever Gecko completes a trade and this information is sent back into the strategy and the trade object in here has all this information regarding the trade, the ID, the vice ID, the action, the price, the amount, all this information in here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to check whether or not it's a buy or sell order. If it's a buy order, meaning we bought some of the asset. Now we need to know how much of the asset it bought and save this information into that tracker file. So in the asset limit, we're going to use the fiat limit. So basically how much you originally used to buy. So in this case, let's say it was $120. It's going to divide that by the trade price. So if it was, if the trade price was $120, your asset limit is one. So meaning that you can sell at most, Gecko can sell at most one Ethereum. Because it's just in case if you were doing some manual trading on the side where you bought some additional Ethereum, at maybe at perhaps a higher price, let's say you bought it at 125 If Gecko sells more than one Ethereum, you end up losing money because it just sells the portion that you bought manually. So that's why we're using this asset limit here. It's going to limit Gecko to only sell what it bought during the buy trade. So the reverse pretty much happened with the sell. So when it sells, we're going to set the fiat limit. So that, so the idea again is like it's basically when it buys, it's going to set the sell limit, right? So it's going to set the asset limit to know how much it's going to sell the next time. And when it sells, it's going to set the buy limit and set the, the fiat limit to set how much it's going to buy next time. So you get the idea. So it's actually doing like a next step thing. So once it has this information, it's going to, again, put it inside a uh, file object and just going to um, store this information, asset limit to asset limit. This gets a little confusing right here if you guys, if you guys look at it. So this right here, the left-hand side, this is just like the name of the JSON object that you're storing in there. So you can call this anything you want. But the right-hand side, the asset limit, that's actually a variable that you're storing. So this has to match this. But this, you can call it whatever you want. The only problem is if you call it whatever you want, you will have to make sure that you match it up to that section when you read, it, when you read back from it in here. So that's the only thing. But otherwise, you can call it whatever you want if it makes sense to you to name it differently. Once that, that file object is created with the asset limit and the fiat limit, 
it's going to call this method file system fs .write file and it's going to write to that balance tracker. So we're not using a pen, we're using write this time because we actually want to overwrite this file. We don't want to append to it and potentially screw up the system because if you append to the file, you have multiple objects in there at this point, multiple JSON objects listing the, as, uh, the asset limit and the fiat limit and that probably will screw up the system. So what you wanted to do is overwrite the file and save the current asset limit and the fiat limit into the balance tracker. And if it's unable to save, it's going to generate a log error saying unable to write to balance tracker file. That's basically it. At this point, you're done. <laughs> it's just that simple. I'm going to show you how what it looks like after I ran it. In this case, I ran on Bitcoin and I set it to a fiat limit of $100 originally, right? And then going back, I just want to check how much it was right here. So originally, and then the asset limit was 28, or 0.02857. If um, Bitcoin was thirty five is thirty five hundred dollars, so obviously when I was running this code, Bitcoin was worth probably like thirty six or thirty seven hundred dollars, and then that fiat limit is a little bit lower because that's how much you can buy with hundred dollars worth. So essentially, you you see that this balance tracker file is able to store the fiat limit, which actually it actually made a win as you can see. So instead of trading exactly hundred dollars. It now can trade a hundred dollars and thirteen cents because the trade that it made was a winning trade. So it's able to increase that uh, fiat limit to however much it sold the Bitcoin at. So the next time it buys, is able to use the entire amount of hundred dollars and thirteen cents. So that's basically it. Um, if you guys want to learn more about um, reading and writing to JSON, definitely check out these two Stack Overflow entries in here. So this is one to read. And this one to, is to write to it. Um, this is basically how I learned it. It's very straightforward. Once you read it, it's not that hard to understand. And the best part is, is just that now that you can write this information into a file, there's so many things you can do with this. You can write, like, let's say, the technical analysis information in there. Like, let's say you have RSI data that you want to write onto a file and then perhaps store that somewhere or have another gecko use that information to make additional trade decisions, that's possible. You can even write to a file where another gecko reads that file and changes the config settings that it uses so that, you know, maybe you see that if a trend is changing, you can have, uh, for Bitcoin, for example, you can have a, another gecko trading bot that's trading on Ethereum react differently because of the information you're getting from this another gecko. There's so many things you can do with this. The possibility is almost endless. So that's my video for today, guys. Just want to remind you guys, I am on Patreon. So appreciate it if you guys uh, will become my patron. If you like the content that I provide, patreon.com slash crypto49er. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.